Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire! <laughs> and I'm super excited to be scrutinizing another swing dance video for you today. But first, make sure you subscribe and mash that notification button so you never miss a swing dance reaction video ever again. Today we're going to be looking at the Rhythm is Jumping 2011. Yes, I said it, 2011. We're going to be looking at a video of me. This was the second Jack and Jill that I've ever done. I was totally nervous and I want to tell you guys a story of what really went down after we watch it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be telling you the absolute truth about how I feel of my own footage. Ah! So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right, folks, I thought I was over looking at my own footage. I don't think we ever are, right? This is, uh... I don't think this event is happening anymore. This was like years ago. Oh! All right, so in that part right there, we both got disconnected, and I literally panicked. I thought, they saw it. The judges are gonna totally, like, judge me down. But for whatever reason, we stayed connected. This, this move I call a hammer lock. And one of the judges' name's Max. He just went nuts over that move, and he came out after the uh, event. Or after this competition was like, you gotta show me how to do that. You gotta show me how to do that. I'm like, what? You don't know it? You don't know how to do that move? It was pretty, it was pretty funny. All right, that, uh, I was looking forward to doing that move and it just happened to work in the right spot. Including that move. That, that was not planned with the music. I didn't know we were going to have this song. Oh, man. I got to give it to this young Padawan. The, the younger version of me. Boy, I got to tell you guys, it's never easy listening to yourself sing or watching yourself dance. I don't care how long you've been involved in the entertainment, there's still this annoying criticism that we all have about ourselves. And, and I even have it sometimes. I even have it. I have to have a little grace for myself. That was where I was at. Okay, Jamin? That's where you're at. Let it go, right? We we always have that. And uh, so I want to be, I want to look at this footage from the perspective of what really happened. What was going on beyond the scenes? Where was my headspace? Uh, that was my second year in the swing dancing. I'd already gone to like 30-something events, and my confidence was getting higher. And uh, I remember going to this event because uh, it was close to my house. My daughter was really young. Me and my wife were traveling. I just had a newborn, and we didn't know what we were doing. We were so ambitious and like forward-thinking. I had my little carrying sash for my baby, and we were in over our heads. We went to this event, and... It was, it was just really tough, like being a parent and actively being involved with the event and all of the conflict that goes with that. And I remember just being satisfied, being at the event, social dancing, just participating and learning because this was an event that had the entire group of the Ninjammers there. This was like a rare occasion to have them all in one spot to kind of learn from everybody's different perspectives. Um, all the dancers were unique. They all had something that was very specific that they added. Uh, to this overall approach to the dance. And I I was enthralled because I, I wanted to, I stayed away from this group first when I first got in because I knew I would like just being creative and playing around with Lindy Hop and just doing different things. But I knew it would not develop the right attitude in me to be coachable. I was, I was kind of 
arrogant uh, in, a, in an unhealthy way. You know, I was coming from hip hop and there's this attitude that, you know, and you don't want to learn from those who've come before. You know, you let me beat you instead of learn from you. And so I, I knew that was going to be a part of my natural disposition coming into this art form. So I stayed away from the Ninjammers that first year. Uh, I took maybe one or two classes from them at other events in my region. And uh, because I wanted to just learn how the technique worked. So I, I spent most of my time going to the other groups of dancers who focused more on just the quality of movement. That's what they would call it. And uh, really, it was just an understanding of call and response, like a very clear view of call and response uh, with elongated elasticity. So uh, it felt a little bit heavier when you're dancing. Um, some people will disagree with that. That's the way I like to explain it. That's where we were at. And I knew I needed that because they were always doing simple shapes that I could see. They weren't really fancy. They were just simple things that were done in swing time to help my novice mindset who could already dance, but I was learning how to do swing dancing, help me understand. So by the time we got to this event, I was pumped. I was getting more uh, energy, more perspective. I was ready to start branching off and doing different things. So when I was there, I was not interested in competing. I was not at all interested in that. I already knew I was going to be good at it. I already knew that, you know, I would probably be traveling and, be, and, you know, be overrated because of the color of my skin when you first come in. And then when you tell the truth about anything, then everybody hates you. Or if you don't join the, the clique that everybody wants you to be a part of, then everybody's mad. I knew all of that would kind of progress. So I kind of laid low and just focused on just getting better at the dance. But then someone ticked me off. They just pricked the right part of me. They accused me of having the wrong intentions, right? And that, that bothers me. That bothers me. This person said, um, well, you need to support the event. You need to, you need to join the competition. You need to do the Jack and Jill. And otherwise, you're not supporting the event unless you do the Jack and Jill. And I'm thinking, that's not logically coherent. Aren't I, you know, supporting the event by paying my money and going to the event? And, and isn't that enough? You know, so that really fired me up. And I thought, you know what? I don't want to like go super sane on these people, but I might as well just do that to prove a point. And so this, I paid to get into this Jack and Jill. And this was kind of just my reaction. I was making sure that teacher was in the room so I could see them. I was like, okay, you watch. That was like my attitude. You watch and see what happens, right? And uh, I was nervous. I got to tell you, I was nervous because this was the first time I ever did a Jack and Jill with this big of a crowd. They were pretty rowdy. Uh, the Midwest was known for a lot of things, guys. They had, I think it was like some kind of pants off, dance off, so, some, something they were doing. It was way out of control. And I was just thinking, what? This is going on? And some of those dancers probably, if they're still around today, they know what I'm talking about. And I just remember it was just a rowdy crowd and I was a bit nervous. And I remember praying to myself. I was like, Lord, you know, um, I want to do this, but if I want to do it, I want to crush it. And... You know, right now, I don't feel like I have the confidence to, to really do anything. This was how I feel. I'm a Christian, so I talk to God. You know, this is how I was feeling. So I was looking at all these other dancers. They were going before me. So the buildup was so exhausting. There were all these dancers ahead of me, and I felt this anxiety. The more I waited and the more the audience was cheering, the more I started comparing myself to them. And I haven't even done anything yet. I'm just sitting there. This is all happening in my mind going, this, they're going to think I'm stupid. This is, this is not going to work. I'm going to totally get out there and botch it. I'm going to kick my partner in the face because I just did that a month ago in a jam circle. And I, I had all of these emotions. So after I prayed, I just let it go. I just kind of sat in, sat in my seat, just kind of watched everybody respectfully. And I just kind of got into this zone. You know, I just kind of thought, just get out there and do what naturally comes to me, what I feel in that moment. <clears throat> so I didn't have a whole not a, a lot of technical ability to move in different shapes and different ways. I knew how to swing out. I knew how to do syncopations. I knew my original moves that I created. And I said, Lord, I'm just going to work with what I have. That was my thought. I'm just going to just do what I can with what I have. <sighs> so I got out there and the partner I had, I can't remember her name. I feel so bad, uh, but she was really lovely. We didn't know we were going to be partnered together. We just kind of got together. And when that song came on, I think that was like the like the couple. Of, I hadn't heard that song that often. So I didn't know the song. So a lot of people thought I knew it. And, you know, I quickly was just kind of doing it. And this, as soon as it came on, I just do what I normally do. I just kind of started to vibe and started to do the syncopations and stuff. And 
I can't tell you what I remember doing it. I can't. There, there aren't any moments in the dance that I can remember because you always kind of look on things differently when you look back at them. Um, so I don't know if what, what's my memory is part of a dream or if it's part of something that I actually experienced. But I can recall the moment I did those two big moves where the audience just like went nuts. Um, the first time I did it, I remember doing the move and noticing one of the judges like going, shh, everybody keep quiet. You know, one of the judges is like, like trying to control everything, right? And people were just going nuts. And I started to get a little bit of confidence because the audience hadn't screamed that loud, honestly. You know, people will scream, woo, and, and their friend just walks out on stage. They haven't actually done anything that merits a, a crazy emotional response. And so when I did that move, like the little spinny move, like you see right here, and uh, they went nuts. I started to go, okay, good. Let me just stay in my lane. Let me do three or four swing outs. And then I know the music's going to change at certain points. So why don't I do something else fancy there? So that was just part of my basic swing understanding, the swing theory of the music. So by the time I did that second move, uh, my partner just looked, I made my partner land. And I'm surprised I didn't rip her arm off because I literally pulled way too hard. I feel so bad about it. But she landed that move and I was like, yes, in my mind, I thought, this is this is great. I'm glad I did. I didn't care about first place. I, I knew I would have won first place after two of those big hits because all of the judges just went crazy. They just they just came alive. And I remember one of the judges, uh, Max was his name, uh, he just ran up to me and just kind of grabbed me and just like, how do you do that move? How do you do how do you do this one? This one. It was in broken French, like, you know, his accent. It's like, well, how do you do this move? And I was like, what are you talking about? What, what movie are you talking about? And so he was explaining it to me. And so uh, anyway, he was just kind of breaking down the move. And then he helped me actually, <clears throat> when it was time for me to do my pro-am, put that move into the choreography in a better way. And so I was able to incorporate that when I, when I danced uh, with his partner at the time. Uh, her name was Ani. Uh, so we, we did that together. And, and I was like, great. So he helped me with my move and was, you know, I was able to make it even better. So... Um, Man, but that's what I felt. After that event, everything changed. Here's the good things that I liked about that. Once I did it, my confidence went up. My confidence went up. And I'm glad that person pushed me. I'm glad they got on my last nerve to attack my intentions, to assume that I'm not good enough because I'm not doing what they want me to do. I'm glad that she pushed me because if I wouldn't have gone out there, a lot of those thoughts that I had before I prayed would still be with me. They would still be like haunting my mind. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. This person's better than me. They've been dancing this long. Blah, 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 blah. And I don't ever think remembering after that, having those thoughts anymore. I think that broke off of me. Something else came instead of that. And it was this, it was this confidence to keep going and to keep working. The thing that I did not like, <coughs> excuse me, the thing that I did not like about what happened after is that people begin to want to put praise onto me and to put I put all of this extra attention on me for the wrong reasons. Before the competition, all the cool kids, they didn't care. They were just kind of vying for position, you know, and you had your leaders up here and they're all kind of vying for position. But right after the competition, the leaders were humble enough to go, hey man, that was cool. That was really dope. And they saw that interaction and all of a sudden now the, the cool people started to bump elbows with me. Oh boy, we got to kiss up because we might lose our position. You, can you imagine? Can you imagine what this does to a brand new person's mind when they come to a community and they want to learn this dance or, you know, they come to the community because they might you know be interested in a person and then they fall in love with the dance and they stay and then they got to deal with all of this stuff that has nothing to do with swing dancing. So I didn't like that because I felt like, okay, now I'm being pressured to be a part of this group of uh, uh, Illuminati controlling swing gods, right? And I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I wanted to be judged fairly based on what I'm actually doing, uh, not based on um, what I did and my skin color to say, oh, he's cool. He's in. He's cool. We automatically praise everything he does. Even if it's oh, halfway good, we praise him. And I, I felt like I had that. You know, I won my first competition right after this. I got one of, the, one of the judges asked to work with me after. I was so humbled. I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, what? why would you want to work with me? I just started. You know, what's, what's the deal? 
and we talked a little bit we had a connection and we ended up doing this competition and winning after we won this competition it was crazy and i knew that was going to happen because we were going to work hard i had the momentum where people kind of liked you and i thought that's not really fair i i, I thought i just want to be judged based on what i'm doing not necessarily because the group or the construct is affirming to you right and I think this is a problem in life that a lot of people have to deal with. So if you want to go through that process, of course, you got to play the politics. You got to do all your things. But know why you're doing it. Do it for a reason that's not just selfish. Don't climb the social ladder just to get into a position and then push everybody else down so that they can't, you know, aspire to reach their goals. You know, that that's that's the part that I didn't like. And so I will say after about a year of that... Um, I just begin to tell the truth and I begin to judge fairly and I begin to assess things for what they really are, not for what the group think thought. And because of that, a lot of people are like, boycott him or he's this or he's that. He has an opinion that's different than ours. <laughs> Shut that down, right? Let's, let's hide behind our computers. Shut everything down. You know, and I thought, okay, I was right. My assessment is right. These people who feel like they're open-minded and they say they're open. Everything is open until I disagreed with them. I thought that's pretty, pretty interesting. I know that train of thought and uh, it's not a healthy train of thought and it doesn't lead to uh, success in society or for freedom of thought in society. And so that's the lesson I learned from this. It's a, it's a, I feel happy watching that, but I also kind of groan a little bit. I also look at some of my technical things I was doing. There was nothing technically wrong with anything I was doing. My partner wasn't hurt until that part where I almost ripped her arm out. But aesthetically, there were some things that I, I don't like now and I go back and watch it. Some of those things like just the, the posture of my body sometimes isn't where I would like it to be. But the joy and the rawness and the explosiveness that I like and, and being young and not knowing young. I was like 31, which is still young. I'm 40 now. Um, but not knowing everything was wonderful. Not having all the knowledge of what's the limit was more wonderful than it is now because it's actually harder to have that same kind of spirit and attitude when you're dancing. And we're a little bit more gracious when people do their first or second type thing. So when I look at it, I'm a little critical of the technique, but, but not much. I'm more critical of the situation that precipitated uh, me getting out there and like going super sane for that moment and just kind of, I was looking for that person, you know, I was looking for her in the crowd. And of course, like I predicted, she came up and pretended like everything was cool and they're be a part of the group. Let me don't, they're basically vying for position, you know? And I'm thinking, Hey guys, I, I am Jamin Jackson. I am a person. I am not dance, right? You guys should have cared about me before that, not just right after. So anyway, there's a lesson for many of you in that. So some of you might be dealing with that, the insecurity of not feeling confident in your own dancing. I get it. I was there. So it takes you to be pushed sometimes. And sometimes the people who don't have the right intentions, um, who are extra critical because they're doing Lindy Hop for the wrong reasons, they want to have power over you. Sometimes those people are, are used for good purposes to push you out of your comfort zone. But the key is, is you want to react the right way. You want to do the right thing with what you have and not just do what they're doing. Okay. So anyway, that's what I thought after all these years of, of going past this video and doing all different things. And I finally looked at this again, wanted to give you guys my initial reaction of it. So what do you guys think about this? Do you hate it? Do you hate Jamin Jackson? Do you think he's a terrible person for telling his opinion and saying it? Um, let me know. Um, like I said, be civil, be pithy. Say your opinion. I'm interested in your opinion. And make sure you don't use any circular reasoning or profanity because this is my house and I got kids in here and I want them to be successful in life, to know why they believe what they believe. And if they have an opinion, never be afraid to share it. So if you guys uh, want to check out my courses, check out the free courses below. If you want to learn how to get good like I did the first year, check out my fundamentals membership. It'll rock your world. If I don't see you guys in class online, hopefully I can see some of your civilized comments in the reaction comments section below. Take care.